Okay, we're going to work on Ashley's eyes. And uh, right now I have the full head shot in here. Obviously, we need to zoom in to work on the eyes. So I'm going to do a control space bar, click and drag. That would be command space bar, click and drag on a Macintosh computer. And the first thing I need to do is go in and get any highlights out of the image that are currently in there. But I want you to note one thing before we do. The specular highlight is right here. And this is sunlight right here and right here. If we move over, let me zoom back out one more time. The majority of the light is over here on the left side of her face. So we have the specular highlight then on this side of the eyeball. So we need to keep that in mind because we're going to create our own specular highlight. And I'm going to um, control plus a few times or command plus on a Mac, space bar and drag. Now, I can click right on this image if I want to. And notice this image is 5 megs. So we're not going to do anything on this image that we need to reduce this file size, no content aware or anything like that. But obviously, uh, out of your uh, camera, you're probably not going to have very many files that are that big. <clears throat> But if you do run into problems using some of the tools, you'll need to do the image image size and resize some of it. In this particular case, uh, we could reduce this to 72 because it's going to go on the web and so forth. But I'm going to leave it as is because I want top quality. Because I'm uh, doing this, uh, and I was doing it before, to print. So to keep it print level I need it fairly large. Now I need the uh, resolution to be higher than 150 so if I go in here and do uh, bicubic smoother best for enlargement then change this to three, 300 pixels I'm going to be just fine but notice what happens it's going to be 20.6 megs. Now we can get by with that I don't want to do that to work on this image for right now but we can make this image bigger let me show you and let me control minus and see we still have a great looking image and it'll print great looking but I'm gonna control Z to undo that because we don't want to work on a 20 meg image right now so let's just go control or command plus to get in the eyes and I like to create a new layer to go in there and patch those eyes up. So I need to use the clone stamp to get in there and I'm going to make this even bigger. So I'm going to hold down my control key, my space bar, click and drag. That's command space bar, click and drag on a Mac. Now I can work on it. I need to replace all of this white here, here, and here. <clears throat> so if I work with a paintbrush, which is what I'm going to be doing in a little while, I need to pay attention to these things. Notice right now I've got a hard looking line. So if I want to turn that off and go over here to my brush and find something that's kind of soft. And again, turn those shape dynamics off unless you, uh, and let me go back over here again real quick. Hardness is all the way over, and I can make that a little bit bigger. And click, and I'm going to left bracket to make that a little bit smaller. And here we go. I'm going to alt click or uh, option click on a um, Macintosh, and notice it didn't do much. Let me move the brush thing back out of the way. And we're on the right layer and we've got all layers selected the problem is opacity is down to 31 so I run that up to 100% and let's try that again and I'm going to sample from right here again from right in here closer to the iris or to, to the pupil is going to be darker 
sample right there and I'm going to sample there. This shouldn't be really hard work unless you have a lot of scattered light on the uh, eyes. And I'm going to sample the dark. Now, one other thing I want to do, this looks kind of blue. I'm going to select a brush, just a regular brush. And notice right now I've got green over black. I want the default colors. To do that, I just press the letter D as in dog, and I get black over white. Well, I don't want to paint with black uh, a lot of the times. So I want to paint, paint with white. I want to undo that. Uh, so if I want to paint with white, I can press the letter X as in X-ray, and I can keep pressing S, X, and it will toggle back and forth. So D is the default colors. X switches the colors for us. But right now I actually do want to paint with black. And I'm going to paint, paint right around this. Now, the best way, in my opinion, instead of painting with that, is to actually burn that. So right here is the dodge and burn tool. It's up to you. I'm just showing you a couple of ways. But uh, if I paint right now, you don't see anything happening. You want to... Uh, actually hold down the option key and paint but you still don't see anything happening right let's go down here to the layer that she's on and now with the uh, alt key held down I'm burning if you and that's the option key on a Macintosh so I find this to be handier than trying to paint. I just want a little bit of that in there too. So now I've highlighted the eye. Again, if we paint without holding down the Option key, it lightens things up. Control-Z to get rid of that. All right, let's go over to the other eye and fix that real quick. Again, holding down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. We just go over that and we could probably do just fine if we tone that down a little bit that's only on 30 percent and but it's okay we, we can deal with that let's zoom back out so we can see what both eyes look like now a lot darker and uh, if we go into our history palette go all the way up and just click on the beginning you see how much more dull, I guess you could say, they are. We may have gone a little bit too high or too dark. Totally your call. I'm going to move that back over for you. Totally your car call on how far we do go with it. So if we want to undo it, we can't go all the way back on both of them, can we? Looks like we might have. Let me zoom in. Yeah, we're back to bluish color. So let's change this from shadows to midtones, and let's do a 20%. And again, we could have typed that in. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger, hold down my Alt key, and on the wrong layer. So let's undo that history that's there go back and get on the right layer and now it's coming in a little less at a time so it's not going to be quite so dramatic and I think that's going to look nicer all right to the other eye and hold down the alt key option key on a PC Let's zoom out, and let's look at the beginning. They're not bad the way they look. I hate it that i got to keep jumping over to let you see, but I think they look better a little bit darker. Brings more life into the eyes. Alrighty, next step. Let's zoom way in again, and I'm just going to get on this one eye. We've got our specular highlights out of there. I'm going to 
kind of get rid of that one real quick. So I'm going to go back up to that layer one. Sample right up in here. Make my brush a little bit bigger. Come on. Got to be on the right tool. So important in Photoshop to be on the right thing at the right time. <clears throat> One more check over here. Got to get rid of this specular highlight. So, Option or Alt. And we keep sampling up in here. Whoops. Control Z that. Option click. I'm going to option click from back there. And then I'm going to select that to kind of smooth that out. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of this. Sample a little bit of the black. Gonna get rid of this little speck of white. And you know how to get rid of the eye or the uh, hair already. But just a little more practice in how to do that. And we don't have to get rid of that. I just think it's kind of distracting. A little bit maybe from there. And again from right in here. Nice soft selection. So no hair in the way at all there. So control minus to get back out here to see. So now it's not in the way anymore. Really pretty eyes to begin with, right? So what we're going to do now is put a new controlled specular highlight into the image. Control, spacebar, click and drag. Command, spar <laughs> Command spacebar, click and drag on a Mac. Okay, a little, little bit more right in here. Soften that area up. Now I'm going to flatten this. We don't need to work on this layer anymore. We've got our eyeballs the way we want to. So I'm going to do a Control E to flatten this. Command E as an echo to flatten it on a Mac. Now these like ribs, lines, those are actually in our eyes. So you don't want to get rid of all of those little details because as we zoom out, you see how important that is to the texture of the eye, the look of the eye. We do have those little lines in there. All right, so new layer. We're going to turn on white. So we go over here, we can just press X to make white come on. We need a brush and it needs to be a soft brush. So let's go up here, soft brush, looks pretty good. And <clears throat> all we have to do up in here, and I'm going to make this left bracket this to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to click and drag just a tiny little bit so it completely fills that area. Now I'm going to run over here to this other eye and do the same thing. I'm overlapping the iris and the pupil. Click and drag just a little bit so it's actually good and white. I'll zoom out. So you can see both eyes. And that's really a hard specular highlight. So what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom back in on what I do on one eye is going to be done on the other eye. So if I click here to zoom in, I can go up here and do a little bit of blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we want to keep it small. So I've got a one in there. That's pretty good. I'll click OK. Second step, I'm going to knock this opacity down. Something around 50%. Now, I'm going to zoom out for you so you can see the other eye. 
is the same way. Second thing I'm going to do, and we could have made that highlight a little bit bigger than what we did. It's kind of a tiny specular highlight. So let me do a control all to select everything that's on layer one and just hit delete. Gets rid of both of those. I'm going to actually make, I'm going to control space bar, click and drag, and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. So twice as big, maybe not quite, but a little bit bigger. So I'm clicking, and what's wrong? I'm, I'm clicking and dragging, and it's gray right here, 50%. So make sure that that's good and highlighted. And let's go to the other eye, and we're going to overlap, click, move it a little bit. Maybe one more little click. Let's control minus, command minus on a Mac so we can see. All right, looking much better in size, I think. And we're going to zoom in. We're going to, whoa, control Z that. Meant to bring this over. So now if we go to filter, Gaussian blur is right up there at the top, still with that one uh, pixel uh, blur. Click that, we get the little blur, and we can take this down to around 55 or 56 percent, something like that. Now we're going to do it all over again, but this time let's create another layer. This is going to be a smaller brush, so click once, and we're going to fill this, kind of overlap that area, and make this nice and white. Go over here, click, nice and white, <clears throat> and now we're just going to zoom out, con command on a Mac, control on a PC, minus, and then we're just going to take down the opacity, so something around 59.60. So there are our specular highlights in the eyes, and they should be the same for both eyes. Okay, so we've got that. Let's let's zoom out and have a look. See, looks pretty decent. And we can, you know, we've still got these layers. If we think needs to go down more, and maybe this one needs to go down more, because we want it to look real. That's our goal. Let's take this one up, maybe a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with what I've got right here. I'm going to zoom in one more time and see what we got. Let's, let's see, this layer is my new one. Let's take it down a little bit more. Yeah, I like it right there. So the other eye is going to be doing the same thing. Okay, so control minus, and I think our eyes are in good shape. All right. We don't need these layers anymore, so let's go up here, I'll move this up where you can see, and let's go up here and down to flatten. Alright, what do we need to do? Well, when we first started, we should have saved this as a PSD file. I jumped right ahead of that, so let's do that now. Save as, and let's put it on our desktop, and we can go with the default name. And we want to click here and go to Photoshop. So we can just keep it the same name that it already was. Click Save. And Ashley's eyes are now written over the top of the original. So got brand new specular highlights in her eyes. And again, we could have gone even lighter with those specular highlights if we wanted to. We also could have blurred a little bit on the last specular highlight that we did but I'm okay with what we've got right now. So now I'm going to zoom back in. Here comes a totally different part. I'm going to uh, create a new layer. And now what I'm going to do is use my uh, graphics tablet because I'm going to draw a moon shape right in here opposite my specular highlight. Right in here, there's going to be a half moon drawn. So, I need my paintbrush, 
and I'm just going to leave it on white because I can change this to any color I want to. But right now I'm going to paint on white. So I can take off with my, and I'm using my uh, brick, my mouse, and this is kind of the shape that I'm going for. And then I, since most of you are probably not going to have access to a graphics tablet just yet, made my brush smaller, I'm going to show you how to do this with a mouse. All right, so we need a bigger, we need an eraser now, and we need a nice soft eraser, so make sure that that's soft. And we come over here, let's make it bigger. <clears throat> and I'm just going to kind of bump into that. And make it smaller so I can round this back in here. And this one's uh, going out longer than this end. So I'm going to shave a little bit of that off. And that's basically the shape I'm going for. So, beautiful thing is... I need this for the other eye too, so I'm just going to click and drag and drop that right on top of that one. Now, with the Move tool, I can take this little highlight and take it over to the other eye. I'm going to turn those marching ants off with a Control D, Command D on a Mac, and come back here and grab that again. Grab it again. Now, yeah, I could have zoomed out done this all in one fell swoop, but I didn't, did I? So let's go right there. So let's zoom back out. How natural does that look? Awesome, right? And uh, Maybe not quite. Because the next thing we need to do is, uh, I'm going to just do one at a time. So layer one copy is this eye, and I'm going to go to overlay. And then I'm going to go to layer one, which is this eye and overlay. <clears throat> now let's zoom in. I think you're starting to get the idea, I hope, uh, but we need to blur this a little bit. So let's go to blur, Gaussian blur. Let's try two and click OK. Now let's see what we got here. So that fixes up uh, this layer. We could probably blur that uh, one more time, but we can also take the opacity down on that eye. So I'm going to go up here to this other eye, run the same filter to smooth that out, and then I'm going to also drop the opacity down. Now let's zoom in. See how that causes the eye now to look rounded? Again, we could uh, go back to the original, which is <laughs> resized, and let's just do it anyway. But if we turn these off, I think you can see what a difference it makes to have that little catch light rounding those eyes out. Now, the trick is not to go too far. So if, if you think that this is still too much, then uh, by all means you take the opacity down even more. Because we want realism, we don't want uh, freaky stuff. So my my thing is around 50%, maybe 60%, and, and I'm happy, but that doesn't mean you got to be happy with where I'm happy. And again, I can go ahead and do a control E to put both eyes on the same uh, thing, the both little reflections of light, and I can go in and do another Gaussian blur on them. Don't really see where that changed it very much, but now I can take it down. And I think we got some pretty terrific eyes going here. Now another thing that people do instead of using white and let's just throw that away we'll just say that was a grand experiment but we don't like it 
So what I'm going to do is actually sample the eye color. I'm going to turn on my eyedropper and I'm going to sample this. And you see down here we got a green. I'm going to click on the color picker, which is right here, and I'm going to go a step higher. And let's go a little more yellowish. I'm going to go a step higher primarily. And now we would paint on a new layer just like we did a while ago with this new color. So to brush is too big. And now I'm painting with the brick again, so I'm all over the place. That's okay because now we can take the eraser and make this into the shape we want it. So basically I want to make a bigger eraser and come in here a little bit. Smaller eraser to get this back edge where it needs to be. And trust me, this is a lot easier with a pen. So we're going to say that that's a good uh, moon shape, although it's really not, uh, because I don't want to take up all night long. Again, we can change the blend modes and, and Based on uh, the different blend modes we have here, we're going to see different things happen. So if I go back to the overlay that we did on white, you see that we get a, a greener green. Let's go back to normal again. And we can actually do a blur. And we can do that a couple of times. And then we can drop the opacity. So we just have a slight one. Now, let's make a new one. And obviously it doubled. I'm going to control minus to bring that out. Turn on my move tool and grab it and put it in the other eye. So now we have both eyes. Let me control plus space bar to move it. See it there. Needs to be moved forward a little. And then what a lot of people do, let's go down here, is do it a second time. So let's go ahead and collapse these two onto each other. Control E. Oops, sorry. Did a command, or a, yeah, command E, and that doesn't work on a PC. So we have to draw the moon again. So I'm going to get the paintbrush, but this time I'm going to go up and get an even lighter color. And come over here and paint with a smaller brush. So we just kind of have, right now we have a, a backdrop that we just created for this little glint kind of thing. Eraser. And again, it's all a matter of painting with a Brick. That is terrible. Control Z a few hundred times. Goodness sakes. And I'm going to paint some more with the brush to get my shape back. And I apologize for using your precious time while I try to paint with this wonderful bar of soap. Again, I'm going to turn on the eraser. I can press the E key. And I'm going to say that that baby is perfect. Let's try dropping the opacity. And what can you tell already? This needs to be blurred, right? So we go to filter, Gaussian blur it. Let's try pumping that back up a little. Now, let's make a copy of this. 
take it over to the other eye, press V to turn on the move tool, get this thing over here. And obviously we got a lot. Move that down maybe a little bitty bit. And you can use the arrow keys to get that thing placed more precisely. Now I think we need to let's see both 61%. Let's go ahead and merge those. Actually, this one's going to need to be a little bit dimmer because it's underneath the air. So that's this eye. So let's try taking this thing down to about 30. Let's go some more. Now let's go down on this one. Maybe up a little bit. What do you think? Pretty good. Now, you're the artist, so you get to decide how much glint, how much specular highlight, how big it should be. Be sure and not make it too awfully big. But this really does help sell the roundness of the eye. Also doing the burning around the entire uh, eye. So keep those things in mind. Let me know if you have any suggestions on how we could make this even better. But good luck in your attempts to do this with this image or any other image where you've got some eyes to work on. You can certainly make them more beautiful and you can actually see the personality in the person after you create something like this or do something like this. That ends this video. I'm out of here. Goodbye.